Well, hello everybody and welcome along to another Saturday session. Now, I'm looking a bit big there, aren't I? Let's make myself a bit smaller. There we go. Right, welcome along then. How are we all doing? So something slightly different today for today's Saturday session. I am going to take part. Am I made of the right stuff is what we're saying here. I'm going to take part in an astronaut test. Uh, so this is an astronaut aptitude test which asks a series of questions based on official NASA astronaut candidate requirements and real-life psychological tests to see if you've got, it, got what it takes for intergalactic exploration. Um, I've got no idea how this is going to go. I've not even looked at it. I've literally got it up ready to go. Um, so let's, let's have a look. Let's see if I've got what it takes. Am I made of the right stuff to go to space? Here we go. Start. Okay. How old am I? I'm 25 to 44. I'm over six foot. NASA's height requirement for an astronaut is between five foot two and six foot three. Hang on, what did it say before? Yes, I'm within the I'm in with, within the age range. That's good. An astronaut can be up to two inches taller after returning from space, as the cartilage in the spine expands due to their lack of gravity. Now, I am. I t everyone asks me how tall I am, and I say I'm six foot three. But if you want the exact uh, exact amount, I'm 191 centimeters, which is around six foot three and a half. So we we'll just squinch down a little bit to get under that six foot three. Um, I think that's fair, isn't it? I didn't consider that being tall, tall, to, too tall to go to space. Right. Question three. What would this 2D net look like when folded into a cube? Um, okay, it wouldn't look like that. because Oh, would it look like that? It could look like that. Could it look like that? Um, uh yes right let's think about this now yeah no 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 so the gray the gray and the green would be opposite sides of the cube so it wouldn't be that one it would be that one uh oh i should read it really spatial visualization is one of the many abilities nasa test when considering candidates based on an exam developed by psychologists jp guilford and wayne s zimmerman the test investigates subjects' ability to picture objects relative to one another and helps determine how well candidates can stay orientated in mid-air. Fair. Right. What is the correct order of the planets from the Sun? Now, I should get this. Did you know Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system? I did. Followed by Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Earth, Venus, Mars and Mercury. Pluto was considered a planet in 2006 when it was relegated to dwarf status by the International Astronomical Union, all oh, those International Astronomical Union people. No, I'm, okay. I'm okay with it, really. Okay, so we know it's Mercury first, so it's one of these three. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Mercury, Venus, hang on. Are they the same? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. They're the same. Well, it's one of them, isn't it? Do you have a degree in engineering or mathematics? Whilst NASA claims there is no one academic field considered to be the best when it comes to applying to be an astronaut candidate, qualifying degrees largely encompass the sciences. Buzz Aldrin graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering. No, I do not have a degree in either of those. So that is a disappointing. NASA have kicked me out the door already, I think. Bad times. <laughs> Question six. Which gears are turning anti-clockwise? Commonly used in military testing, this exam rates a subject's understanding of physics and mechanics. This helps NASA and the ESA assess how well recruits can apply abstract concepts to real-world scenarios in space. So, if the belt's turning this way, then that's turning clockwise. This one's turning anti-clockwise. That's turning clockwise. That's turning clockwise. 
that's turning anti-clockwise and that's turning clockwise. So I think it's B and E. That's my answer, I think, for that one. B and E, we happy with that? Yes, B and E, we'll go with that. Did you know, so the question seven here is, what percentage of the Earth's atmosphere is made up of oxygen? Did you know meteors burn up in the Earth's coldest atmosphere layer, the mesosphere? When a meteor or asteroid starts entering this layer, it collides with the particles and generates a large amount of heat due to friction. This makes the meteor break down into smaller rocks before eventually burning up. Now, percentage of the Earth's atmosphere is made up of oxygen, I believe, I'm pretty sure, is 21%. So we're going to go with that one. Question eight. Can you speak Russian? Once applicants are accepted as astronaut candidates, they undergo an intensive two-year training program before becoming eligible for flight assignments. During this time, they have language training, military water survival and aircraft flight readiness training. Now, I don't speak any Russian, so I'm going to have to click no. But I guess... That's not a prerequisite for, for training to be an astronaut if they're going to teach you Russian when you're an astronaut. So I think that's OK. Can you speak Russian? No. OK. Which hidden shape can you identify in this pattern? Based on psychologist Kurt Gottschalk's work, this assessment determines field independence and the ability to isolate simple forms from complex patterns. Those who identify shapes are considered less likely to get distracted in high-pressure scenarios. Right then. Can we identify? I assume it's in that shape. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I think it's this one. I think it's this one here. Look, so if we go along the bottom like this, which is along the bottom there, and then up this one, up there, diagonally across, diagonally across, along that way, then down and back to the corner, I think it's that one. I'm just going to double check. I don't think it's this one. Uh, no, because there's no, we've got no sort of line here. It could have been if it was there. I don't think it's this one. I don't think it's that one. And I don't think it's that one. So I'm going for this one here. I'm pretty sure it's this one, which is, let's just double check. Bang, 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 bang. Yep, it's that one. Gotta be. Come on, NASA, here we come. Okay, question 10. Complete the formula. Speed equals something over time. Did you know gravity affects how time passes on other planets? For example, a solar day on Mercury's surface lasts the equivalent of 176 Earth days, whilst a year, in just eight, whilst a year is just 88 Earth days long. This is due to the planet's slow rotation almost matching its orbit around the Sun. So yes, this, is the, the, this formula is speed equals distance over time. I mean, anyone who's putting temperature over time here, I'd be a bit worried about. But yes, it's distance over time. Question 11, how do you respond to stress? Interesting question this, because this isn't asking you what your knowledge is, it's asking you to be honest about yourself, and I will be. Did you know, one of the key psychological traits NASA evaluates is the ability to cope and cooperate during emergencies. According to a 2018 NASA study, the ideal candidate must have high emotional stability and moderate openness to experience. Okay. How do I respond to stress? I think I respond well. I like to try and lighten the mood. I avoid it wherever possible. Sometimes it makes me take risks. I tend to crumble. Okay, I'm going to take a few things away. I don't think stress makes me take risks. So that's one I'm getting rid of. And I don't think I respond especially well to stress. Not badly, but not well. Um, I think it's going to have to be, I like to try and lighten the mood. For stress, for me, I think. I don't crumble, and I don't do well. And I don't take risks. I, and, I, and I don't, I wouldn't avoid stress, because stress is just a, a natural part of life. So I think, yes, I try to light, lighten the mood. 
Oh, here we go. This looks like a bit of a classic uh, IQ test question. Question 12. What should the missing square in the sequence look like? Psychologist John C. Raven developed this exam to measure educative ability, otherwise known as the capacity to make sense of complex data. These matrices remain the most common type of question to appear on military intelligence tests. I did not know that that existed. Maybe I should have a go at one of those. OK, let's have a look. So we've got a diamond which goes... Right, so the diamond is going up, down, up, down, not there, down, up. The hexagon is going there, there, there. Oh, unless it's going like this. Down, up, down, up, down. Oh, wait, that's the way I did go. Hexagon is going from there to there to there to there to there to... So the hexagon is moving around the box. And the triangle... Yeah, OK. So I think if we look where the hexagon should be next, which is down here, that gives us three possible scenarios, this one and this one and this one. The triangle goes up one each time up one up one but then it goes up two up two then up one then up one then down one so what's going on there with the triangle okay well we know it can't be the start again so the diamond goes down, up, down, up, down. Ah, is it behind the hexagon there? Then down, then up, then down, which means the hexagon has to be in the bottom right. So it's either that one or that one. Now we've just got to get the triangle right. So in this row, the, the triangles... Yeah, ah. I think... I think it's back... It, it, I think it is back to the start. The hexagon makes a full rotation of the boxes. Not a full rotation, but a half rotation ends up back here. That's down, so it's definitely that. So the triangle, can I suss the triangle out? It goes up one, up one, up two, down one, up one, up one. Ah, I've got it. Up one, up one, up two. Then it goes up two again, but it, re it rejoins the button. So one, two. Ah, oh, but then it goes up one. Up one, up two, so one, 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 up two, up two, up one, up one, up two, up two, which would be there. OK, I'm going for that one. I spent too long on that question. I'm going for that one. Question 13. In which of the five layers of Earth's atmosphere are most of our satellites in orbit? The atmosphere has five primary layers, with the troposphere located closest to the Earth, extending from sea to about 11 miles up to the equator. This is where most of our weather occurs due to the combination of warm air rising and falling. I'm pretty sure that's exosphere. Pretty sure that's exosphere. The furthest one out. Question 14. Do you often take charge of situations and events? Um, did you know, although US astronauts have support from the mission control of the Johnson Space Center, every expedition comes with new risks. The ideal candidate should be able to take charge where required, but also listen to instruction from mission control. Um, do I often take charge of situations and events? I actually do. Uh, 
especially if we're doing something that is... Uh, as an example, if we're playing mini-golf as a family, I've got the card, I've got the pencil, and I'm writing the scores down. So I'm going to say mostly. OK, the last question then. Question 15. How many cubes make up the shape below? Did you know good spatial awareness is one of the many elements that the European Space Agency and NASA test when evaluating candidates for space? Other aptitude assessments include coordination, concentration, technical knowledge and memory, along with tests to assess physical endurance. OK, so how many cubes here? So we've got... I'm going to take this as two different towers. So we've got four at the base of this tower, then two lots of three. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then another four at the base here, which makes 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 26. There we go. Bingo. 67%. I will take that. Right, look what's let me down. My flipping education. You possess most of the skills NASA is looking for and you're almost cut for a candidacy. However, there's still work to be done before your profile is strong enough to beat the competition. Despite thousands of applications, NASA have only selected 338 astronauts since the programme began in 1959. So my abstract reasoning and IQ was 100%. My spatial visualisation was 100%. My physicality was 60% which I'm highly offended by because I run ultra marathons, so that's very harsh. Knowledge, 75%, not bad. Personality, 80%. But then I don't have the degree they want, so therefore I don't get into NASA. Boo, boo. Who likes NASA anyway? Anyway, there we go. Thanks so much, everyone. Another Saturday session uh, done. I think it's fair to say that I am made of the right stuff but I just need a degree in maths or engineering and I am in, 100% in. See you in a few years, NASA. Uh, no, but seriously, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be doing more of these tests uh, in future for Saturday session. They're good fun. Uh, until then, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>